Hello, welcome. My name is Jody, Jody Skulls, and I am your instructor for the Emblex Review Course. This is where we meet uh, almost every week, uh, unless we're on spring break or winter break, holidays. Today, we're talking about the upper body, and we're doing movements and muscles of the anatomy of the upper body. Uh, we're going to talk about the neck, going to talk about the shoulder joint, we're going to talk about the arm. Yeah, we're going to get into it. Love it. Uh, and class is in three parts. The first part is test taking strategy. The second part is our learning. And the third part is dissecting questions. And I will assure you that just as important as your learning is your strategy on taking this test. Um, so thanks so much for being here. Wanted to mention also um, that it, when you're seeing this, uh, you are most likely already a part of the Patreon community. So thank you for um, your donations. Thank you for your pledges. I really appreciate it. Um, that literally is my paycheck. Nothing else. There's no other sponsors here. Uh, so I really appreciate you becoming part uh, um, uh, a patron uh, in the community and also getting great value for that uh, and for that pledge. Um, so most of you are already a part of the Patreon community, but if you're not, I'd really uh, encourage you to consider joining at the $49 level. Um, and here's why. Um, you get all the classes. So yes, you get the live classes here with me. Um, and at the $20 level, you get the practice exams. But at the $49 level, especially if you're within three months of taking your um, Emblex, please consider uh, joining at that higher level to take full advantage of the deeper dive classes. There are seven deeper dive classes uh, with subject matter specific quizzes. So if you take an anatomy class, you get an anatomy quiz. You take a business class, you get a business quiz. Hold on just a moment here because we got bunches of people coming in. Okay. So when you watch this later, this part will be uh, edited out. <laughs> I get to edit out this all this stuff too. <laughs> So I would truly encourage you uh, to consider uh, joining the Patreon at the $49 level simply so that you can get the best benefit, the fullest benefit. And when you're within three months of taking your uh, Amblex, it's 140, 49 bucks a month and it's 150 bucks and you're done. So just a little plug uh, for the online learning center, the online learning classes, the deeper dive classes. Um, all right. So how does all this actually work? We've talked about the Patreon community and thank you so much again for being um, uh, a member there. Uh, but we have two separate websites. I just wanna remind you, two separate websites. And actually there's some people on for the first time today. Hey, if you're brand new. Uh, and so we have two separate websites. We've got the Patreon and that's what we've been talking about. Um, but for those people who are um, at the $20 pledge or the $49 pledge, you have access to another online learning center. And you'll see it in the URL. It says Digital Chalk Business of Body Work. So that Business of Body Work site is a place where I've done a deeper dive class for you on each of the seven categories of the MBLEX. So in case you weren't aware, the MBLEX has a content outline. And I will show it to you. So in case you were wondering, and many of you have already printed this, but I want to show you where it is. It's the FSMTB website here, FSMTB.org. And you go to Mblex, you hover over that Mblex sign.
when you hover over that emblex sign, you get the drop down screen and you go to exam content, exam content. And that's what your hat, that's the page we're on right here. When you get to the exam content page, you can see Emblex content outline. When you click on that, you see the seven categories of the Emblex. So this is nice and big. And what you see here are all the categories that you'll be tested on when you take the MLEX. So anatomy and physiology, 11%. And I will post this again in our, uh, with the video later today. And if you'd like to print this or just make, a, uh, make it a bookmark, um, you can do that. So here's the anatomy and physiology. These are all the different systems of the body and the function of those systems. Kinesiology is 12% or 12 questions on your MBLEX. Pathology, contraindications, areas of caution and special populations. Here's all of this in there. Special populations simply means the elderly, pregnant, um, someone in a wheelchair, uh, someone with cerebral palsy, um, so a special population that would have a special consideration. Here's where we get classes of medicines, medications, benefits and physiological effects of massage. 15 questions on your exam. Client assessment, reassessment, treatment planning. 17 questions on your exam. Nice big section on clinical reasoning. Ethics, boundaries, laws, and regulations, 16 questions on your exam. And then guidelines for a professional practice. This is things like hygiene, self-care, body mechanics, business practices. So business management, marketing, some terms, um, and healthcare business and ter um, healthcare terminology, business terminology as well. So there is a um, there is a um, class for every one of those categories in the digital chalk business of body work deeper dive classes in that section. That's also where you find your practice exam. Yeah. So just as a reminder, there are two separate websites. Patreon is our community. It's our membership community. It's where I post these recordings. I post um, the congratulations. We have another congratulations coming up this uh, tomorrow. Uh, yes, uh, la 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 la, Marisol, Marisol passed. So you saw two already um, from last week. Um, and so just be prepared. When you pass this Amblex, I'm going to be asking you for a picture, for a thumbs up, for your pass paper. Um, you know, to be holding it, thumbs up, yay, so that we can all celebrate with you and congratulate you uh, on this milestone in your massage career, passing the MBLEX. So, um, yes. And so those two websites, the Patreon community, where we share the recordings, where we celebrate, and then for a deeper dive, the Business of Body Work Online Learning Center. All right. Time now to go to uh, our learning for today. Do, do, do. All righty. So anatomy of the upper body, shout out to Dr. Sunil who uh, shared some of his slides and I'm using them, some of them. And a shout out uh, to Shah Alam uh, for also sharing some of their slides. Um, and so I'm using some of them. This is what's called intellectual property. And by sharing whose slides these are, it is not a copyright infringement because you know, plus they shared them publicly uh, on the SlideShare, uh, SlideShare.net, so. All right, 
we are going to study start with the muscles of the neck today and look at all of these muscles and landmarks bony landmarks um, muscular attachments it simply can be overwhelming if you try and um, memorize all of it so let's look at the major muscles of the neck we're going to start with the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. We see it here on the lateral view, but if you turn your head, this, that little muscle that pops out, is your SCM. So right there. And when we work it in massage, we do something called milking it. We're careful of the... Um, windpipe, the trachea in this area. So the SCM. So this is where you see this um, origin insertion. I am going to refer to the origin insertion. You already work it when you do massage. And if you're not practicing right now, if you're not putting your hands on people, find someone and get them on a massage table. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I still have a private practice. Here's the other half of my office. It's a massage table. Get your get a body on a table. Yeah, keep your hands still. And think about this. Okay, so superior nuchal line. So when you see nuchal line, this is up in this SCM area. So it's just below the ear. See if you can find it on yourself. Just below the ear, the edge of the cranium. All right, so take a look at here, the upper border of the manubrium of this, so this is the origin, the upper border of the manubrium of the sternum and the medial third of the upper surface of the clavicle. This is why I don't ask you to memorize this because it's a lot of words, right? But I would like you to know that the SCM, like even when you see, look where it attaches. So some of the manubrium, the upper part of the sternum, right? The sternum has three parts. The manubrium up top. We'll see a picture of that in a minute. I'll show you then. Um, so let's take a look. The mastoid process and the lateral third of the superior nuchal line. Mastoid process. The process is a bony landmark. Mastoid, masseter, muscle, mandible. All right. So that's the SCM. And uh, what what action does it does? Well, you can. So this is the action of the SCM. It is one of those muscles turning the head, making it look up. Somewhat a little bit of rotation of the head as well, but more so looking up because this this muscle is contracting. The SCM is contracting. That's really what it does. Lengthens and contracts. Another great look at the SCM here, just along under the ear. Remember during your massage to get a, not just the occipital ridge, but get all the way over, right? Yeah, so coming down. Uh, this is also a great look at the scalene muscles. Now, often um, superimposed on each other, the SCM and the scalenes, two different muscles. So the SCM and then the scalenes. The scalenes here, you're going to see the medial scalene and anterior, and they do divide these things up into anterior, medial, um, medial and posterior. But really, for the purposes of our conversation, uh, we're going to stick to um, when I never go to school. Stick to talking. Um, we're going to stick to talking about the scalenes as a group. Yeah. So, but let's take a peek here. You can see this is actually a lovely picture, right? So here's like the side of the trap. Some people, um, some textbooks will call that the flap. I don't like calling it the flap. I like it calling it the anterior view. So see, like from the front, you can see my trap. So that's actually the trapezius right there. Yeah. 
Here's the bony landmark of the clavicle, so you know where we are. We're going to talk about splenus capitis, splenus cervicus in a minute. But here's the SCM, and then just behind it are those scalenes, anterior medial scalenes. Good, another great look here at those scalenes, anterior, middle. See how they're attaching. These do not attach on, on the cranium, but they attach to the upper cervicals. Those are the scalenes. And see where they're attaching? What is this? That is the first rib. Okay, and the posterior view of the scalenes. Uh, oh, no, this is the anterior view, my, my apologies. And yeah, you can definitely see here how they're attaching. This is throwing me off, this little winged thing here. Um, so the attachments are on the first six cervical vertebrae. They don't actually, the scalenes do not attach to the cranium. Therefore, the scalenes are not a, um, a part of um, of flexion and extension, excuse me, it's lateral flexion of the neck. I was going to correct myself there. So lateral flexion of the neck. So SCM tilts the head, lateral flexion of the neck. And as I mentioned, the insertion point here, first rib, attaching all along those first six cervical vertebrae. Let's move along uh, to a really big muscle, a big flat muscle called the platysma. Um, and that is the muscle that deep, um, yeah, there's a better picture, okay. So all this along here, lovely. And this is, as you may have guessed, it's almost like a big old beard, right? Um, but this is the muscle that depresses the mandible. It's responsible. So we've got the masseter. That is one of the strongest bones in the body that elevates, crunches, chews. But it has to release to depress the jaw. And that's the jaw of the platysma. Venus capitis. All right. So as you may, as you probably can guess, it's responsible for extension. So flexion of the neck, extension of the neck. And it is right here on the base of the skull. It says the lower part of the ligamentum nuca, uh, nuca, nuca. Um, like I said, base of the skull is good with me. <laughs> but it does, um, the, uh, the, okay. So origin and insertion, origin and insertion. So it's a little bit different than uh, the direction of other muscles. The insertion point is up here on the mastoid process. Can't quite see it, it's on this side. And this nuchal line, otherwise known as the occipital ridge. Here's the occipital bone, the occipital ridge. And that little, that little edge that you feel um, is the nuchal line. Can you tell anatomy was not like my big thing in school? Yeah, that's okay. We gotta know some of it. So this is the spleen capitus. Another great look at the splenus capitis. See that it's attaching here at the mastoid. It's going to be along here, coming down. And it's actually, it actually comes all the way down to that, to the first four thoracic uh, vertebrae. We've got a little bit of splenus cervicus here. But cap, um, capitis is the big one for extension of the neck. Extension of the neck. Tilting back of the head is extension of the neck. Okay. 
just this is a nice picture too to point out um on the side here as far as anatomy of a vertebrae these are called the transverse processes of the vertebrae transverse right they're transverse flat they're in that plane they're on both sides um, of the spine but the bony bumps here these are called the spinous processes so you've got a spinous process and you've got a transverse process and these transverse processes lead into ribs we're going to see a picture of the thorax a little later in class but just a little anatomy there on on the actual spine Ah, oh, such a nice picture of the splenus capitis. All right, so here's a funny word. Extension of the cervical spine, right? Extension of the neck is one of the movements. It's also rotation to the ipsilateral side. Why in the world would we just not say one side? And we say ipsilateral, but I want you to know that, and we'll define these lateral words in the next slide, um, lateral flexion to the ipsilateral, one, ipsilateral, belonging to the same side. So ipsilateral, so my splenus capitis is on the, on the same side as the ipsi, as the same side, ipsilateral side so it's the same side so it's my left splenus capitis that is contracting to move my head my cervical spine into lateral flexion so every now and then you'll see one of these words and you're like what in the world so you actually do know ipsilateral now you know same side ipsilateral I don't have a great learning tool, just ipsilateral is on the same side. It's one side. Um, yeah. So ipsilateral is different than unilateral. Uni, one. Uno in Spanish is one. Uni, unicycle, right? So it's only on one side. So that is different than same side. Ipsilateral is same side. Same muscle is on the left, it's moving to the left. Unilateral is just one way. So relating to one part. Bilateral, both sides. Bilateral, muscles in the front are bilaterally firing to flex the neck versus either unilateral or ipsilateral, okay. And then we know lateral compared to medial, medial is closer to the midline of the body, lateral just means further away from the body. I know, new words today. Hopefully you will never see these on your exam, hopefully. But if you do, you can kind of come back to this. Unilateral is one unicycle, but ipsy just means same side of the body. So the muscle that is contracting is contracting it to the same side of the body. All right. Let's move along. Levator scan. Five metacarpals. And the rest are phalanges. Oh, a pathology of the hand. Uh, Dupuytren's. So Dupuytren's contracture. See this thickening of the tendon? And they're not sure what causes it. Could be hereditary, could be overuse. Um, it has three stages. That first stage is um, the person just may notice a little nodule. And oddly enough, it almost is always on the ring finger. Don't know why. If you read my book, The Body Blueprint, you might be able to guess. So, sneak peek, Ooh. body blueprint. Yeah, might be able to guess. Um, but uh, so the little nodule, then it becomes like a like a, a ropey. Uh, this tendon becomes very ropey. 
and then it actually brings it brings it into contraction and it can be more than one finger so there we go those are the three stages of Dupuytren's contracture Let's see we have some comments coming oh thank you Lana appreciate that yay all right <gasps> yay time to dissect some questions yay <laughs> all right take a breath here we go the group of muscles that best describes the movement of abduction at the shoulder joint are all right we did talk about adduction and abduction this is where you get to figure out how to use your chat right so chat is here. So you see that little pop pops up? Chat is there. So you can put your, so we're going to go through and we're going to dissect this question, meaning we're going to figure out what it's really asking. Then we're going to eliminate a wrong answer. The group of muscles that best describes the movement of abduction. What is abduction? Abduction. Are we moving medially or laterally? Abduction. Do it with your arm right now. Abduction. Okay. So, A, deltoid all heads, pectoralis minor, and teres minor as a helper. B, supraspinatus starts the movement, deltoid is the major mover, biceps as a helper. C, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. D, pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, and teres major. Ooh, all right, let's get rid of one wrong answer. We know it's not letter C, right? Because what is letter C? Letter C is all the um, rotator cuffs. All right, I've got 10 responses in the chat. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. The best answer is Boom, letter B. Nice. And let's see. V, you got it. Yes, Miss V. Ensley, you, yep, you got it. Marina, you got it. Lana, yep. Aite, beautiful. Marina, yes. Melissa, yes. Yolanda, yes. Mayor, good. Good. All right. Next question How many carpal bones and what's most often fractured? We have 10, and the fifth metatarsal is, uh, is the most fractured. B, nine, and the trapezium is the most often fractured. C, eight, and the scaphoid is the most often fractured. D, seven, and the hamate is the most often fractured. Okay, we know we can get rid of one of these right away. Letter A says metatarsal. Did you catch that? Ooh. Metatarsal. Tarsals are in our feet. And I will sidebar here for a second. The fifth metatarsal is the most often uh, fractured bone in the foot. That's the fifth metatarsal. So somebody stubs their pinky toe and cracks their fifth metatarsal. Happens all the time. They can't do anything for it. Um, you usually just have to walk around with some pain. Sometimes they'll put you in a boot. But the fifth metatarsal is the most often fractured, but in the foot. All right, best answer, boom, letter C, we have eight, and the scaphoid is the most often fractured. Yes, Mayor, you got it. Good, Yolanda, yep. Aite, you got it. Reina, you're in. Yeah, Nucha, eight, yep, yeah, exactly, good, letter C. Valencia, uh, I always want to say Valencia, but it's Valencia, Valicia, Valicia. Yes, you got it. Lana, you're in. Yo, Yolanda. Mm-hmm. Marina, yes. Good. Melissa, you were right up, right up top there. Good. Latrice, yep. Ms. V, good. Ensley, you got it. Awesome. Nice job. Next question. Yeah. That's a wrap. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Super job today. The neck muscles are tricky. 
You know, it's okay. I, you know, we just need to know the major ones. And so you can watch this again. I'll put more notes into the description so that you know which muscle is the primary mover of what direction, because um, they all kind of mix together by the time uh, we get done. That's why the neck's a little tricky. Yeah, that's why the neck is a little tricky. The back is a lot easier. So, all right, well, congratulations, you guys. You did a great job today. It's a lot of information, good anatomy, good movement, good understanding of the shoulder joint. And this type of learning builds the foundation. It builds the foundation for you to, it, it lays the foundations for you to build on. And so if you didn't know all that stuff, that's okay. You get to watch the video again. You get to do, dig a little deeper and figure out, and here's the fun part, figuring out what you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> So I'm going to sign off on the recording. Thanks so much for listening. My name is Jody Skulls. Uh, I am your instructor for the MPLEX review course. I'm going to, and uh, we'll see you again next week.